محمد و آل محمد سلوات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير وآتينا موسى الكتاب وجعلناه هدى لبني إسرائيل ألا تتخذوا من دوني وكيلا ذرية من حملنا مع نوح إنه كان عبدا شكورا وقضينا إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لتفسدن في الأرض مرتين ولتعلن علوا كبيرا فإذا جاء وعد أولاهما بعثنا عليكم عبادا لنا أولي بأس شديد أولي بأس شديد فجاسوا خلال الديار وكان وعدا مفعولا ثم رددنا لكم الكرة عليهم وأمددناكم بأموال وبنين وجعلناكم أكثر نفيرا إن أحسنتم أحسنتم لأنفسكم وإن أسأتم فلا فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليسوء وجوهكم وليدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوه كما دخلوه أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تتبيرا صدق الله العلي العظيم Thank you very much, Muhammad. Um, we'll now have uh, Nasheed by Muhammad Valji. Please welcome him with salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Salawat. Mere vedelap hai Nabi Nabi मेरे वेद लब है नबी नबी मेरा दिल मकाम हबीब है मैं मेरी ज़ेश के रसूल हूँ मैं मेरी ज़ेश के رسول ہو وہ حبیب میرا طبیب ہے میرے ورد لب ہے نبی نبی میرا اس گلی سہراب تا چاہ سر جکاتے ہیں انبیاء چاہر رحمتوں کا نزول ہے چاہر رحمتوں کا نزول ہے وہ جو عرش حق کے قریب ہے میرے ورد لب ہے نبی نبی سلوات یا نبی سلام علیکہ یا رسول سلام علیکہ یا حبیب سلام علیکہ 
صلوات الله عليك أنت شمس أنت بدر أنت نور فوق نور أنت إكسر وغالي أنت مسبح السدور يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك ربي فرحمنا جميعا وامه أن سيئاتي ربي فرحمنا جميعا بجميع الصالحات يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك صلوات Um, brothers and sisters, just to let you know about the rest of our programs coming up, this Friday we will inshallah be having Dr. Stephen Jones who will be joining us and speaking to us on Islam and the, uh, and the liberal state, national identity and the future of Muslim Britain. Um, we continue with our regular programs, uh, so on Thursday um, evenings we have our Dua Kumal program which starts at 8 o'clock with Salah followed by um, Dua Kumal and Surah Yaseen. Um, on Friday we have our regular Friday programs and on the weekend on Sunday we have our um, morning tafsir classes from uh, Sheikh Bahmanpur which start at 9 o'clock. We also have um, Hussaini Madrasa and tuition classes um, and we have our yoga classes as well um, during the week on Tuesdays. Just waiting for Sheikh Shamali to join us. Inshallah, he'll be here shortly.
Uh, Sheikh's just outside, so he'll be here uh, in the next few minutes. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat. Please welcome um, Sheikh Shamali with Allah Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Hujat al Islam, Dr. Muhammad Ali Shamali graduated um, from the Islamic seminaries of Qom in Iran. After completing his BA and MA degrees in Western philosophy at the University of Tehran, he earned his doctorate in philosophy from the University of Manchester. He is currently the founding director of the International Institute for Islamic Studies in Qom. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف First I congratulate you for the anniversary of Mabath Sharif and I hope inshallah Allah gives us as gift tonight better understanding of the message that in this day Allah gave to humanity uh, to give you a little background about my uh, talk tonight uh, I can tell you that when we had the uh, eighth round of Catholic Shia dialogue in Kenya because normally we used to have it either in Europe or Iran in the seventh round there was a suggestion that we hold the next one in Kenya in Africa because we had a monk from Kenya, who was doing his PhD in 
Pisa in Pontifical Institute for Arabic and Islamic Studies in Rome. And he suggested it's good that we share this friendship with people in Africa. So in September 2017, we met in uh, Karen outside Nairobi. Uh, and we had very good discussions there. And also on the side, we had a program in the uh, Shia community. We had program in the uh, Tangaza University, which is run by the religious orders. So it was very good, mashallah. And alhamdulillah, still, we see the, uh, some of the blessings of that round. So several times so far, we had courses with Tangaza University and uh, our brothers go there as teachers and as students, and we have three weeks course on Islam and Christianity. One day, my wife told me that in their uh, group discussion, because we had a main session and then smaller group discussions, uh, this friend, who is very sympathetic to Islam, very nice person, uh, told that we hear from Muhammad, meaning me, some verses of the Quran which talk about peace and you know dialogue and unity, and we hear from some other Muslim verses which talk about you know war and you know these type of things. And basically, every person refers to some verses of the Quran. This put me in a very uh, you know, difficult situation. Because I thought, you know, these people who don't know Islam, then we wonder who is telling the truth. Is it this person telling the truth or the other people are telling the truth? Or Na'uzu Billah Quran has no, you know, clear message and Quran is in, you know, internal conflict, for example, is self-contradicting. So I was thinking how we can explain this to someone that may not have time to go through all the verses of the Quran and you know explain the overall view of the Quran. So I've been thinking and then after maybe two, three years, uh, we had the birth anniversary of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I was going to talk, and then this idea, alhamdulillah, came to my mind, that since then I have you know, benefited a lot and shared with some people. So the idea is that if we want to understand the Quran, we cannot just go by a statistics, for example, I say, okay, so how many verses talk about peace? How many verses talk about jihad? And because the number of verses, for example, about this topic is more, then this is more important. There is no such a, you know, ground or such a kind of methodological point that we go by number. Or to say that, for example, uh, we have to study the whole Quran. This is also difficult. What should we do? So the idea is this that I want to share with you. In order to understand the Quran as a whole, one of the best ways, if it is not the best way, at least one of the best ways would be to look at the Quran as a book which is given to a messenger who has been given a certain mission. Yeah? So Rasulullah is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deliver a message. Suppose we send an ambassador, for example, or a representative. Maybe, for example, as a country, as a nation, as a community, if you want to send someone to represent us, to talk on behalf of us, to deliver a message, what can help us understand 
the work of this person and all the communications that maybe through years we are going to have with him is the mission statement. The mission statement is of utmost importance. Yeah. And also what type of person we are recruiting. For example, if you want to send someone for education, we should send a teacher or educationist. If you want to, for example, do business, we should send a businessman. If you want to do, for example, some medical thing, we should send doctors and nurses. So depending on what we want to do and what is the core of the message, we should also recruit people who suit that mission. So now, instead of being in need of studying the whole Quran, and sometimes for a person who is not, you know, a scholar of the Quran might be very difficult that even after studying the whole Quran to understand what Quran says, we can classify Quranic verses into two parts, two levels. One is the more underlying which serves as the guide. And one is something which is built upon that foundation. Any verse in the Quran which talks about the mission of this person or character of the person who has been chosen or about the revelation or communications to this person would be of much more significance than details of what was over years communicated. Okay? For example, suppose we send someone as a teacher. Okay, in the mission statement, we say you are there to uh, teach people, help them with, you know, literacy, etc., etc. Then when he goes there, he says, you know, there is an old abundant place that we can use as a school. He communicates to us, shall I, you know, try to make it a good school? So we ask, you know, he reports and then how to, for example, proceed, how to raise money. Then he says, you know, the school is nearly finished, but we have some people who are making troubles, some neighbors, they don't let us, you know, to use it in this, as a school. So we say, okay, how to deal with these people? Then one day he says, you know, they attacked and burned the school. What should I do? So we try to help. So we may have so many things, even we may have about, you know, fire, I don't know, plumbing, about plaster, about, you know, how to deal with the city council. All these things are there. But these are not necessarily reflecting why we sent that person there. And actually, because these are very urgent issues, Sometimes we may need to communicate more about these issues. Maybe the mission statement was just one page. But these things can be many pages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, sent Prophet Nuh. Allah Nabi Nawali wa alayhi salam. In the process of delivering the message and accomplishing the mission, he had even to build a ship. Yeah, he had to do some carpentry. Did Allah send Nu to make carpentry? No, but at some stage it led to this. So we have to see why Allah chose the prophet and what did he expect from him to achieve. This helps us to understand the whole thing better. Although process in this process has to deal with the pagans of Mecca, has to deal with, you know, uh, other faith communities, has to deal with, you know, Hippocrates in Medina. He has to deal with lots of challenges. But 
those verses which help us about the mission itself are able to shed light on all these things. So when it comes to the mission statement, uh, we have some verses which are general for all the prophets and messengers. This helps because we know that, for example, this person is not the very first and last person sent. Yeah, if we have kept sending, you know, different people for this position, this post, then previous mission statements also help. For example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Lakad arsalna rasulana bil bayyanat wa anzalna maghum al kitab wa al mizan li yaqum al nasu bil qist." This is about all the messengers that they are all sent to help people to establish social justice. Li yaqum al nasu bil qist. People should themselves establish social justice, not. لِيُقِيمُوا أَلْقِسْ Ambiya messengers are not to establish justice by themselves. They are to help people, and people should do this. This is general, and we have verses like this. But I am focusing on the verses that are about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In Surat Muzammil, verse 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, inna arsalna ilaykum rasoolan shahidan alaykum. Sometimes Allah tells the Prophet why he is sending him. Sometimes he talks to people, to people why he has sent the Prophet to them. Yeah? So, because in Quran, one of the things we learn is that communication is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in many, many cases, use every means for communication. Even he communicates to shaitan. Yeah? Even people of hell and heaven communicate. Communication is very important. So, Allah says to people why he has sent the prophet and also tells the prophet why he has sent it, him to people. Here Allah is talking to community. Inna arsalna ilaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum. Kama arsalna ila fir'awna rasula. One of the key terms that we find about the prophet and his mission that he is sent as a shahid, as a witness. This by itself is a great, uh, you know, help for understanding the nature of this mission. Inshallah, we'll talk about this. Another thing that we find, which is very common, is that the prophet is a nadir. Yeah, is a. Uh, Warner. Surah Saba verse 44 says that to the pagans we had not sent uh, before you a warner for some time there was a gap yeah for some time In Surah Baqarah, verse 151, the tasks of the one task of the Prophet is Talaw. To read, to recite, but not just as a Qari. Talaw, according to some uh, people, means to choose 
what message to deliver. So Tilawat al-Ayat is not that, for example, if we are dealing with, for example, pandemic, Rasul is not just coming and reciting some verses of the Quran. We say, okay, he's doing Tilawat al-Ayat. Means he knows what verses of the Quran can address this issue. So Tilawat is very focused and selective. It's not just, you know, reading some verses. Otherwise, every Qari of Quran can do this. He's purifying you. He teaches you the book and wisdom. And he teaches you what you were not able to know. Not just you didn't know. Something that you had no access, no way to know. Those things that you could know yourself. He may tell you, he may not tell you. He says, okay, you go and find it. He may say something about diet. He may not say something about diet. Because this is something that you can yourself learn. But what is expected from him to say, anything that you are not able to know by yourself for your guidance and happiness, he would certainly tell you. So you see, the tasks of the Prophet involve in addition to communicating divine uh, uh, signs or divine verses or divine communications, tazkia, purification, and teaching. Prophet is sent as a teacher. We have this in some hadith that Prophet said, Bu'istu mu'allaman. I am sent as a teacher. Or bitta'alimi ursiltu. Allah has sent me to teach. So Allah has sent someone who is a teacher, but not theoretical teacher. A teacher that at the same time helps you with self-purification. A teacher who teach you how to develop hikmah. The sign of you benefiting from this teacher is not just how much theories you know, how much data you have in your brain or mind, is how much you have achieved tazkiyah to nafs and how much hikmah true followers of Prophet Muhammad must be high in their purity and their hikmah. Because these are two fruits. Knowledge you can get. But if everything works well, if the tree has no problem, fruits should come. Taqwa and Hikm. Surah Anbiya verse 107 is the famous ayah that you are all familiar. And this ayah is especially important because it's very uh, precise and also comes with hasra. You know, it's exclusive. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as mercy. For alameen, not mercy for Muslims, not mercy for Arabs, not mercy for particular group, even not only for human beings. Alameen, because alameen in Arabic doesn't, uh, you know, belong only to human beings. Every rational, intelligent being is included. Even jinns can benefit. Even to some extent, angels benefited from this message. In Surah Fatih, We have sent you as a witness, as someone who gives Bishara, good news, and a warner. If you follow this path of guidance, you achieve these beautiful results. If you ignore, then you are going to lose. So there's a Bashara and Enzar. In Surah Al-Ahzab, we have more details. And I want to focus on these four verses from Surah Al-Ahzab. Ya ayyuhan nabi, inna arsalnaka. So, 
prophet should be clear, everyone should be clear why this person is sent. You have to understand everything that he does later under the light of these four ayah. In addition to Wama Arsalna Kalla Rahmatan Lil Alam. All confirm the same thing. Ya Yuhan Nabi, Enna Arsalna Kashahida. Again, this idea of Prophet being a shahid is to be a witness. In the Quran, as you know, we have four groups of people, four categories which are very high in their rank. And these are the people that every day we are asking Allah to enable us to join them. These are Alladina and Amta Alayhim. Yeah, Ehdena Sarat al Mustaqim, Sarat al Ladina and Amta Alayhim. Who are these people and Amta Alayhim? Man Yutallah or Rasul, Faula Ekama al Ladina and Amallah Alayhim, Menan Nabiyin, Vashuhada, Vasadiqin, Vasalahin. So these are prophets, but to be a prophet is a position, is a post. After, for example, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even if someone is very high, he cannot become a prophet because there is no time for appointing a new person. Yeah, we may have people afterwards who are better than some of the. People in the past became prophets because this time is not time of being a prophet. For example, Prophet said, Ulama ummati afdal min anbiya'i bani Israel. Imams and ulama rabbani, if they were before, they were prophets. So, prophet is a position. But, shahid, witness, is it a position or it's not a position? And Siddiqin and Salihin. So there are four. The first one is a clear. And by the way, these can overlap. We can have someone who is Nabi and Shahid and Siddiq and Salih. For example, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Vazkur fil kitab Ibrahim and who kana Siddiq and Nabi. He was a Nabi and also Siddiq. These are not, you know, necessarily exclusive. They can overlap. According to the Quran, Shahid is also a position in its full sense. In every generation, Allah appoints someone as Shahid, as a witness. And on the day of judgment, he would ask them to offer their testimony. From every nation, Allah is going to bring a witness. And he's going to bring the Prophet as witness for people of his time. Our Sunni brothers sometimes, or maybe most of the time, they have this idea that uh, the Prophet was witness for people of his time and future. So basically, he is the last witness for them. But we say, no. The prophet, in this technical sense, is witness for people of his time. Why? Because the Quran says that witness should live among people. How can we understand this? From the verse about Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he is going to ask Isa. Did you tell people to take me and my mother as to Allah, as to you know people to worship? He says, no. Subhanaka ma qultu lahum illa ma amartani bih. I didn't say anything except what you asked me to say. 
Then he says something which is very important for our discussion. إِنَّمَا كُنْتُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْهِمْ مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ I was a witness as long as I was with them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّغِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ When you took me, although he didn't die, but Allah raised him, he's no longer among people, he's not a witness. Because the witness is the people that lives among people, people can look at him, listen to him, learn from him. And then on the day of judgment he says, who listened to me, who didn't listen to me? So, Isa says, I was in this sense witness only as long as I lived with them. Ma domto fihe. Another ayah which is very helpful is this ayah. Afa man kana ala bayinatin min rabbihi wa yatluhu shahidun min. Are you disputing and not accepting someone who has bayana from his Lord, he has clear signs from his Lord, and he is followed by a witness from himself. Who is Shahid? Minho from the Prophet, who follows the Prophet and comes after the Prophet. It's Imam Ali. And this ayah clearly says that there is a Shahid Yatluhu. Yatlu here is not from Telawa. Yatlu means coming after. So the prophet is not last witness. Yes, in a sense, he is witness, meaning all people can learn from him. Isa is a witness in a sense that we can all learn from him. But in this technical Quranic sense, witness has to live among people. Every generation has his own witness, has his own shahid. And today is Imam Zaman, that he is the witness for all human beings. So, Allah says, Inna arsalnaka shahidan. He, we sent you as a witness. Someone that is a hujja, someone that who is a standard, someone that is a great example, a role model. As we had also in other places, Mubashir and Nadira. This Da'iyan ila Allah bi'izni is very important. The Prophet calls people towards God, but bi'izni. If you study the Quran, all the cases that we have bi'iznihi or bi'izni, you realize that we are talking about something great, something, for example, a mu'jaza can be where we use bi'izni. For example, Allah says to Isa alayhi salam, istakhluqu minna teen ke hayyat tayr fatanfuqu fi fayakunu tayran bi'izni. Izni is very important. Uh, we don't have uh, time to focus at this. Rasulullah is not a person who just calls people towards God, like what I do. You can do all, you know, we can call people towards God. But do we have izn from God? It's different. Sometimes someone says, where is the house of this person, so and so? I can say, this is the address. But maybe he goes there. And they don't let him in. But if he has appointed someone to invite people to my house, then whoever goes by this invitation, the door is open. If I just tell people, go this way, this way, that's his house. He goes there, but maybe house is not open. But if he has appointed someone and says, go and invite with my permission, invite them to me. Then the door will be open. You understand the difference? So when Rasulullah is calling people towards God, it's different from a muballig or, you know, alim or a mu'min calling people towards God. 
whoever follows the prophet will be let in bi'izni wa sirajan munira you are an illuminating light this is very beautiful point that rasulullah is always illuminating because he's always receiving salutations from allah yeah inna allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi the result of this continuous you know sending salutations is that he becomes a source of light because whoever receives salutations is moving towards light yeah allah says huwa allazi yusalli alaykum wa malaikatuhu li yukhrijakum min adh-dhulumati ila an-nur so rasulullah sirajul munir then we continue wa bashir al-mu'minina bi anna lahum min allah fadlan kabira we already said mubashir but again allah says give them bashara that there is great favor from allah for them bashir al mu'minin this is a great bashara you know if someone like allah says i have great favor for you it's very important yeah you may uh, have you know have heard this story once uh, they say that uh, nadir shah or shah abbas i, I think that was nadir shah he was going for a battle and he was with his army going through one of the cities on the way or villages and so a young boy ask him what is your name he said nasrullah he was very happy he took it as a good sign you know i am going to war and this is nasrullah he was tafaul bil khair he said where are you going he said i'm going to maktab to learn you know like a school what is your subject these days you know what do you learn because it's mainly focused on the quran he said we have studied these days and now fatahna laka fatahan mubina he was so happy <laughs> his name is nasrullah and then he says inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina so he was very happy he wanted to give him a gift so he gave him a golden coin to the child the child started crying he said why are you crying he said you know if i take this coin to home my mother says where do you find this did you steal this this is golden coin we didn't have he says okay tell your mom that king has given me this golden coin he said yes i would tell her but she would not accept he said why because my mom would say that king doesn't give one golden coin if the king gives gives a bundle <laughs> so he gave him a bundle so king is different from ordinary people yeah someone who is very generous someone who is very you know much supportive when he gives is different allah says bashir al mu'minin bi anna lahum min allah fadlan kabira fadlan kabira it's a great bashar and then wala tuti al kafirin wal munafiqin please listen very carefully to understand you know what is this person supposed to do allah says you are a witness you are a warner give bashara again give bashara and then he says don't obey kuffar and munafiq he doesn't say fight kuffar and munafiq he doesn't say kill kuffar and munafiq he doesn't say destroy kuffar and munafiq la tuti'il kuffar wal munafiq we sent you to be a witness for the truth if you want to obey them then you will be confusing people don't obey them and then they will start annoying you what should you do you want to focus on your job as i said a muallim a teacher is sent he wants to 
open a small school, for example, or big school, focus on job. People come, annoy, try to annoy the students, annoy parents, if needed, burn the school so that education doesn't take place. What should you do? Don't obey them. Leave them and their annoys. They want to hurt you? Try to not be distracted. Put your trust in Allah. If they want to fight you as much as possible, <laughs> don't let them you know, sidetrack you, take you away from your mission. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Allah is sufficient as wakil. Interestingly, Allah in some places says, we have not sent you as wakil. We have not sent you as hafiz. You are not except responsible for delivering the message and be a good witness. So if this person ends up with being, you know, forced to go to war, you realize that this was not part of the mission. This is like carpentry for Nu. Was not part of the mission. It happens. Rasulullah is sent rahmatan lil alameen. Is sent as shahid, mubashir, nazir, siraj munir. And when it comes to kuffar and munafiqeen, it says, la tut'il kuffar wal munafiqeen wa da'adhahum. So if then we come across a verse that talks about fighting or doing jihad, jahid al kuffar wal munafiqeen, you realize that these two verses are not at the same level. One talks about the principle, the other one talks about emergencies about certain circumstances. Also, what type of person Allah has chosen? Has Allah chosen a warrior, a commander of army? Allah has chosen a person who is very soft, a person who is with great traits of character. Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ because of mercy from Allah, you have become very soft and gentle. You know, if you compare between two verses of the Quran, when Allah talks to Prophet Musa, Allah Nabi Ali I am not saying uh, Prophet Musa was not soft, or you know, I am not talking about that. I am just comparing the verses when Allah talks to Prophet Musa and Harun he says when you go to Pharaoh how should you speak to him first he go to Pharaoh and then how you should speak with Pharaoh Allah says to Musa and Harun speak with Pharaoh softly yeah Maybe Pharaoh remembers. Even with Pharaoh, there is a chance. We should try. This is a command. Allah commanded them to speak softly. But when it comes to the Prophet, Allah doesn't command him to be soft. Allah says, You are soft. <laughs> You don't understand the difference? Sometimes I say to you, a person, you know, be soft, be gentle, be kind. Sometimes I say, you are kind. It's a big difference. When it comes to the Prophet, Allah says, بِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ You have become soft because of mercy of Allah. This is one point. The other point, for Musa and Harun, Allah says, be gentle in your speech to Pharaoh. But here, Allah says to the Prophet, you are soft as a person, not just in a speech. You know, sometimes someone is a gentleman, someone just says gentle words, but maybe in other areas he's very harsh. 
Rasulullah is lying. Therefore, what we have with Rasulullah is opposite. If people don't understand these things, they think the message of Islam is different. Allah to Musa says, speak softly. When it comes to prophecies, he are soft, and then in the battle, he says, alayhim. In the battle, be a little bit harsh. Because you are very soft. <laughs> in this way, no one is going to listen to you. Jahid al kuffar wal munafiqin waghluza alayhim. If Rasulullah was Ghaliz, Allah would not have told him be a little bit harsh. Indeed, he says, Law kunta fazzan ghaliz al ghalb, lan fazzu man hawli. So, the character of this person is a character of rahmah and softness. He is a teacher. The message is, again, Rahma, instructions are don't obey them, let them, and you know when they try to annoy you and hurt you, as much as possible, don't engage. What is then the book? This is a book of healing and rahma. So under these verses, then we have to understand everything else. So don't be uh, thinking that, for example, we just put verses together or can't. And how many verses are about, you know, jihad? How many verses are about, uh, you know, for example, um, peace and dialogue, etc. No, there is a methodology here. Part of the methodology which everyone can understand is this point. See what is the mission statement of this prophet? What type of background and character this person has? And what is description of his book? In this way, then you can realize that anyone who offers a different reading of the Quran and says Quran is a book of you know, war, a book of, for example, I don't know, conflict, etc. This is misreading the Quran. Yes, Quran talks about those things, but not as principles. Those are instructions for certain circumstances. But the principle, the governing principles, is as khair. Peace is better. Yes, sometimes we need war. Like a teacher sometimes may need, may need to send to this student, you are dismissed. You cannot come to school. But this is not what a teacher, you know, <laughs> is loving to do or wishing to do. So this is what I wanted to share with you. Then if you want to add to this, you can also add verses which talk that the prophet is only responsible for balagh, just to deliver the message clearly. For example, Allah says, in Surat Ali Imran. Look at this ayah. Very clear. If they come and debate with you, don't say go and you know do muhajj. <laughs> Even in the story of Mubahala, Allah says, if they had juke, yeah, because they went all the way to challenge the Prophet. The Prophet didn't go and challenge them. In had juke, hey, if they debate with you. فَقُلْ أَسْلَمْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّهِ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنَ Say, I have submitted my face to God. And those who follow me, they surrender themselves to God. وَقُلْ لِلَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَالْأُمِّيِّينَ To the people of the book, and to the people of Mecca who were not Ahlul Kitab, they didn't have knowledge of the book, to both of them tell, أَأَسْلَمْتُمْ are you also able to submit yourself to God? Not to me, to God. I am submitting myself to God. You also submit yourself to God. Fa'in aslamu, aslamu. If they submit themselves to God, faqad ihtadu. They are guided. Wa'in tawallahu. If they don't submit themselves to God, what should you do? Fa'inna ma alayka al You just deliver the message. That's it. Doesn't say, you know, try, you know, to force them, try to, you know, fight them. No, just, you have to deliver the message. That's it. 
You are a shahid, you are a witness. Or in Surah Al Ra'd, verse 40, wa hisab. You just explain, it's up to us to judge. Surah Nur 54. Again, قُلْ أَتِيُ اللَّهَ وَأَتِيُ الرَّسُولِ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِمَا حُمِّلْ وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِّلْتُمْ Tell them, obey God and the messenger. If they turn away, if they refuse, say, okay, he is responsible for what he has been asked by God. You are responsible for what God has asked you. وَإِنْ تُتِيُوهُ تَحْتَدُوا If you obey him, you are guided. But the messenger has no task other than clear balagh, clear delivery. So now I think I can have peace of mind that if I have a non-Muslim friend and says, you know, you Muslims are different. Some of you talk about you know, Quran being a book of war, another, you know, book of peace. One it says, you know, book of love, another says, you know, hatred. So I can say, okay. I give you just 10, 15, for example, verses of the Quran about the mission and the messenger. And I think this would then help you to understand what is the entire picture. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Salawat. We have time for any questions, if there are any questions from either side. No questions from either side? Not today, it looks like. Uh, we'll, we'll end there, if it's okay. Salat ala Muhammad. Allah and Salat ala Muhammad. Finished? Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya Amir al Mu'minin. Assalamu alaikum ya Fatimah al Zahra. Assalamu alaikum ya Hassan al Mujtaba. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Wa ala tis'at al Ma'asumin min Zurriyat al Hussein. Ali ibn al Hussein. Wa Muhammad ibn Ali. Wa Ja'far ibn Muhammad. Wa Musa ibn Ja'far, Wa Ali ibn Musa, Wa Muhammad ibn Ali, Wa Ali ibn Muhammad, Wa Al-Hasan ibn Ali, Assalamu alayka ya sahib al-asri wa al-zaman, Assalamu alayka ya imamana wa imam al-insi wa al-jan, Ajjal Allah ta'ala farajah, Wa sahal Allah ta'ala makhrajaka wa dhuhurak, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وهافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوا على محمد وآل محمد